There's a whole lot of talk. Will he or won't he run for president? We're talking about Maryland Governor Larry Hogan. He's a Republican who took the deep blue state of Maryland by storm this last election cycle. His approval rating is through the roof. Our Bruce Johnson sat down with the governor over some wings and crab dip as they talked about the possibility of higher office and surviving the same type of cancer. Governor, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Man, this is my pleasure. It's great hey. to see you. I was excited, uh, but we wanted to meet not for an interview with the governor of the state of Maryland, but really just two old guys kicking it, talking about a real serious problem that could have killed both of us. You know what? I've been really looking forward to talking to you because we got so much. Uh, Do we have a common, common history? Oh, my God. Not just that we went through the same cancer, but I'll I followed your story. It's almost identical. You're kidding. The way that you discovered it, the, 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 the fact that the doctors they first said it was nothing. I can't wait to talk. Oh my I God. mean, it's almost exact. I'm looking forward to this. After you, sir. I'm so glad you're feeling better. Oh, I'm glad you're feeling good. better. Yes, yes, sir. You look good. You got more hair than me. Ah. <laughs> we could have met in his office in Annapolis, but how exciting would that have been? How about an Annapolis bar? McGarvey's. This is what a 70% voter approval looks like. The son of a U.S. congressman, Larry Hogan was built for this, beginning at a young age. He worked on Republican campaigns and referendums. As the appointment secretary under another Republican governor, Hogan handed out thousands of state government jobs. That's a lot of political capital. Wow! His re-election as a Republican in this heavily Democratic state made national news. I never imagined in a million years I was going to be where I am today. I, I was a lifelong small business guy. I only ran because I was frustrated with what was going on in our state. Nobody thought I had any chance to win. We pulled off the biggest surprise upset in America. And I said, I'm just going to do the best job I can. We probably can't get a second term because I'm a Republican in Maryland. Let's go out there and win this thing. Let's keep moving Maryland forward. We then uh, did something nobody could believe was possible. Second time in 242 years, yes, I, yes, I got reelected. They said it was impossible. They said it couldn't be done in Maryland. But thanks to all of you, we just went out and did it. You also ran an incredible campaign. Some of those ads, I'm looking at, I'm like, wow. You got a white Republican go. Hey, he act like a regular human being to me. Black guy who talks about, you know, white Republican. He's here when nobody else is here. And But you know, it was all real. We operate, man, off of friendships. It is what it is. You know, we making it work. The average Republican a uh, governor candidate in in the country uh, that got 10% of the black vote. I got one third of the black vote. Running against a national leader of the NAACP who could have been the first black governor of Maryland. Which just spells <laughs> the myth that black people won't vote for white candidates. Black people have always voted for white candidates. But they usually don't vote for Republican candidates. That's right. And so people, they, they, it was hard. All right, guys, let's go out there. We're going to go win it. Larry Hogan is no conservative. And that could be a problem should he seek higher office outside of Maryland. Your brand of politics, uh, can I call you, uh, what, a moderate Republican? Yeah, a moderate. Okay. Uh, you, you couldn't survive the primaries, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, look, uh, what, should you decide, say, to run for president? Or... I'm, I'm not thinking about that. I'm focused on, on Maryland. But our system is, is, is such that the, the most liberal uh, Democrat usually wins the Democratic nomination, and the most conservative Republican right. usually wins the Republican sure. nomination. And a lot of people in the middle go, this is the choices we got, right? This is the largest mandate for change in Maryland in, in, wait, wait, in 63 years. A lot of people would like to see him seek higher office, including the presidency. It's not likely to happen as long as Donald Trump is in the White House. You separated yourself from uh, uh, the president on a number of fronts. Yeah. Uh, do, do you know President Trump? He called me a couple of times. Uh, one time when we had the flooding in Ellicott City, he reached out, which was very uh, nice and appropriate, and the federal government provided us a lot of assistance. And he called me the second time when we had the, uh, the shooting of the, of the Capitol the reporters, the journalists here yeah. in Annapolis. This isn't going to be a small deal with China. This is either going to be a very big deal. Tax cuts, trade. Hogan likes some of Trump's policies, but his close associates say he doesn't like Donald Trump. He's his own worst enemy sometimes. I mean, I don't know the, 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 the things he says and the way he says them and the tweeting and all that. 
I mean, you can argue about his policies, you know, whether it's good or bad or whatever, but a lot of it is just the, 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 uh, the way he does it. Governor Hogan tells me he wants the Mueller probe to run its course without interference from the White House. There is something wrong here, he says. He just doesn't know what it is. I see it. I, look, I read the paper. I, saw, I see the stuff on television, but I don't, I'm not there. I don't see the evidence. I want to be fair. I think, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. There's definitely problems. It's very concerning, but I don't know all of the facts. You're willing to wait? I, I, I think the, uh, the uh, investigation ought to continue. I don't think it should go, you know, I don't think it should be biased and totally just, let's just go get the president. But I think no man is above the law and they ought to do a a fair investigation and if there's wrongdoing they got to get to the bottom of it how you doing it's good to see you good to see you <laughs> hi guys so the governor waits listens before plotting his next move it's not likely he gets to go back to being just a maryland businessman any more than he can go back to being the person he was before he was struck by non-hodgkin's lymphoma you know the cancer going through that as you know it changes you right it was a life-threatening situation, and it, it made me realize the important things in life. I mean, it made me realize that life is short, and you got to make the most out of every single day you got. I, and I was always sort of a driven person, but it's like I I try to enjoy every day, and I try to get I, I, I try to make the most out of every day that I'm. You never know how many days you got left. This is my granddaughter Daniela. So you you, you better make the most of them. Looks like you sure made the most of your time with the governor. I was wondering if you all were ever going to eat during that interview. There was a lot of talking going on. So he, he gave you a lot of information. Do you get the sense that he's actually going to run for president? I think there's no doubt in his mind that he thinks he would make a better president than Donald Trump. Uh, he's listening to people uh, and just as importantly, he's watching the polls and awaiting the special counsel's probe. Bruce, that was a great story and I'm nice. sure there'll be more to come and the governor will have a whole lot more to say to you. We'll be watching. <laughs> Thanks. All right.